Hi there, and welcome to another edition of Tuesdays with Corey. We've been on a little bit of a hiatus, mostly thanks to Rick not doing his job. So we'll you know, put that maybe aside for now. But today, we have a fantastic show. We're going, you see no laptop today. Today's going to be just a talking show, a talkie, as we say. And we will be talking about HPC. Yeah. And so why don't you uh, tell the audience what you do, mm -hmm. what you're working on, and sure. we'll get into some questions. And who you are, of course, as well. I should have, should Absolutely. Have, I should have introduced you, but I'm going to let you do everything now. Uh, my name is Evan Burness, and I am the lead program manager at Microsoft in our specialized computing division for our high-performance computing offerings. And uh, I'll be talking to you today about our new offerings for HPC called the HB and HC series virtual machines. Awesome. So right off the bat, what do these letters mean? Because I'm going to act like I don't know. Yeah. What do these letters you mean? Know what, what the decoder kind of, ring and what is. kind of idiot came up with these names? <laughs> that idiot would be me. Oh no, I there thought it was me. Go. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to say me. So the H was me, let's be clear. But then the additive, the additive C and B the was you. B and C was me. You made it better. Let's say that. You've added to make it better. The original naming scheme was broke. Sure, I'll take that. Okay, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. Say nice. There you go. See? How about that? All right, go explain what, so explain what these are and what, what each one of these SKUs are and they've recently launched. I mean, they recently just, they just we've, came out, right? We've just, just gone into GA. GA. We're just exiting a super successful preview period wow, and we're in that? GA now. Okay, yeah. okay. So the two ones, HCHB, mm -hmm. hit me. What are the, what are the, so C compute B is C is big. for compute, B mm -hmm. is for bandwidth. If bandwidth. You, yes. I knew if it. You, if you look at HPC workloads, okay. it's really important to get super specialized in terms of what are the characteristics of the underlying technology that actually drives the applications forward from the standpoint of performance, scalability, mm -hmm. and cost efficiency. Got it. If you look at the broad brush, okay. you've got a pretty even division between workloads that are driven principally by memory bandwidth. Yes. How quickly you can get data in and out of DRAM right, right, to a right. local CPU. Into CPU. And workloads that are driven by dense computation, a lot of flops, a lot of vector math. Right. Right. right, and that's really then just the speed of the CPU itself that's going to matter. That's correct. Got it. Yep. So, so uh, and maybe the surrounding caches and so on. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so memory-based memory-based workloads. Like, mm -hmm. what are some examples? This is where like you've got sort of large CAD files and you're sort of uh, working against them. Like, what are some of the examples of? Did I, was that right, or is that just like totally? It certainly can be. Oh, it that's nice. That's a yeah. nice response to me. Okay. Certainly, <laughs> cer cer certainly high-end scientific and engineering workloads definitely are going to take advantage of this. Of that memory bandwidth. Yeah, the workload you'll see that loves memory bandwidth all day long is fluid dynamics. So Got any it. manufacturing organization, Correct. oil and gas organization, public sector research that's looking at things like black hole supernova, plasma out there in the galaxies. Got it. Got it. Huge amounts of memory bandwidth will take as much as we can give them. Yes. And we've prioritized that for First and foremost, so we released. And we're like leading in this, right? By a long shot. By not even close. Yes, by if you look at some of what else is happening. It's, this B is much bigger than other Bs that we've seen out there. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> if you if you look at the competing clouds out there, we typically can do about 1.5 to 2x the memory bandwidth that they can do, often at lower cost. And this is really part of what differentiates Microsoft with our specialized computing division, which is we don't just do general purpose offerings, we do super specialized stuff Got it. for the customers who really need that level of specialization. That's awesome. Yep. That's awesome. And so that, you said that's a good oil and gas uh, example, some mm -hmm. manufacturing as well, obviously anything where there's fluids involved. Yep, absolutely. If you think about, say, for instance, uh, an airline manufacturer, jet fuel, uh, yeah, jet yeah, fuel totally, totally. wind going wind, over the wind wing tunnels. of tunnels. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, got it. You got gotcha. It. Cool. Yep. yep. Got it. And then, okay, now, Super floppy mm -hmm. uh, workloads. Super floppy. Super I've floppy. never heard that. I'm going to well, steal you have. that. It's, yeah. it's a type of workload. There you go. And, and it's focused on <laughs> flops. Super flops. There you go. Uh, yeah, it's it's, super flops. They don't let get. me talk to people yeah. often. There so, you go. <laughs> yeah, go. So tell me what the types of workloads that we're seeing with, with during the preview, right? You saw a bunch of these during the preview. And so what are some of the great examples of that type of workload? Well, one workload that really, really likes it is structural mechanics. Mm. So structural mechanics is sort of the complementary angle to what you have with fluid dynamics. So the world is principally con constructed of fluids and solids. Mm -hmm. You've got gases in there, but gases, from a simulation standpoint, are just another form of fluids. Fluid. Yeah. So if you think about, for instance, car crashes, where all the car companies, they have to prove to safety regulators that if my car hits a wall at 60 miles an hour, 
what's going to happen to the structure of the car, what's going to happen in terms of the force that's exerted on the passengers inside Very the car. Cool. You need to be able to simulate this and prove to re uh, regulatory agencies you're making a safe product. Yeah. All right? So these workloads are super duper important when you think about uh, e uh, airline engines that you need to show that if they blow up, they're not going to cause the plane to fall out of the sky, yeah, yeah. cars crashing into walls, things of that nature. Right. And then when you can combine them, with where, where, where you get really groovy stuff is when you can combine CFD workloads with uh, structural mechanics workloads into a single simulation or an end-to-end uh, an -to -end workflow. Yes. We're doing what's called multi-physics, where it's simulating all these different classics. Uh, all together. Uh, all the physics, all together. So like the molecules of a car in a crash coupled with the wind going over it and sort of how that plays out, something like this. You got it. Nice. And now the interconnect between these, how important is the interconnect between these nodes? Like So like I I'm, I'm assume that if you're doing some sort of calculation like this, either yeah. the fluid dynamics or the sort of structural things, you know, you're doing more than one machine is involved typically? By definition, yeah. the, HC, the HB and HC series are all about multi-node runs. Got Not it. just a couple of nodes, yeah. a lot of nodes. Got it. So Azure has the cloud's first deployment of 100 gigabit networking. And we go a step further, and we have 100 gigabit InfiniBand networking with Ooh. SRIOV. And why that really, really matters is Dumps that means- that network right into the CPU. Not just that, but it enables customers to use the InfiniBand we have in Azure exactly as they do in a bare metal deployment. Would have done on-prem. So if they spun this up themselves, it would look just like this. It looks exactly like it. And the networking we have is literally as powerful as the interconnect you find in the world's two fastest supercomputers. We brought it into Azure, and now we're deploying it. My globally. brain being one of them, and what's the other there one? There you I'm go. Sorry. Yeah. My brain. OK. And, and, and that <coughs> brain is what? Stop me from thinking of what my next comment was going to be. So that's awesome. Um, GA. So we just went GA. So we now just went GA. Psh, everyone can go do this type of crazy fluid dynamic, structural processing, yep. supercomputing work. Anyone who At wants your, to run it. Anyone who wants it. Just fingertips, spin it up, per second billing, same, same jazz. Just yep. the world is your oyster. You got it. That's yep. awesome. Yep. Yep. And so I'm looking for. I'm gonna go. I mean, I'm gonna go play with this right now. I think I'm gonna go do some. Some. I gotta find some sort of fluid that I'm doing some dynamics against. But yeah. I'll. I'll figure it out. So that's awesome. People can go use it. Any other things that you want to call out about this? Anything else that I should have asked that I didn't? I think the big thing for people to know is that Azure is super committed to this space. We are not just doing. Uh, the HB and the HC series now, which is what you can find here in 2019 in GA, this is part of a pattern you're going to start to see from us in terms of doing new technology deployments year over year, and sometimes even faster as the technologies come to market. We, this is a, the users of these technologies have an insatiable appetite for performance, for speed, for scalability. Yeah, they yeah. want to be able to run stuff at scale that's orders of magnitude beyond even what's available today. So there's no such thing as fast enough. Right. Be able to serve those customers. Just going to keep. We have to be on the cutting edge, and that's what we are committed to doing in Azure. So we can't talk about what we're doing later this year just yet, but we're super jazzed to talk about it in a few months and show people the advancements that are coming even beyond HB and AC today. That's awesome. And do you have any sense of how many additional letters you're going to be using for these sizes? Like six, seven, eight, you don't know yet. You can't, this, you can't reveal that. I like maybe just going in alphabetical order, like B, C, D, something like that. Nice and simple, people can remember super that. Super boring. Yeah. That's not, that's... Uh, what, which, what letter would you like? Like, uh, like a mean, Klingon letter? I, you know, for the longest for time I off? wanted a Z, yeah. like for like something like super special. Zorro? Zo the Zorro skew. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. we're gonna <laughs> trademark that right here. All right, I think we're done. I okay. mean, with that, once you start talking about Zorro, yeah. uh, I think maybe we're done. So thank you, Evan. This is fantastic. You're I'm really welcome. excited. Thank you. Um, and you guys should all go check this out. Uh, in the meantime, if you've got any questions on anything that we talked about here today, mm -hmm. um, any questions about uh, HPC, about what we're doing in this business, in this space, um, hit me up on hashtag Azure TWC, and we will make sure the right questions get out. And I don't know if you have a, if you want to share a hash, you want to hashtag this out. Um, are you a big Twitter Twitter fan? Yeah, you can find me at Evan Burness at, or at Evan Burness on Twitter. Okay, perfect. That's an easy one. So, hit us up, ask some questions, and thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful Tuesday. And Thanks, we'll everybody. See you again, kind of soon. Maybe another big break because Rick again is on a joy ride around the world. Once he's back, we'll be back on target. So, good to see you, and hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.
see. I have no real assurances that this isn't like for an Azure outtakes reel. It could be. I mean, this is all, this right now will be, if you do something funny, yeah. it will be on an outtake yeah. reel. <laughs> Great. But right now what you're doing is notably not funny. Okay. Or interesting. <laughs> good. <laughs> Just FYI. Yeah, that's good.